Listen, man. They call me the problem, but you could call me the can man because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans. Me How you doing, everyone? My name is Ryan, and this is Ade, and welcome back to another edition of Box Talk. Today, we've got a great match at Cruiserweight. We've got Hernandez versus Afalabi in a fight that would potentially make the number one or the man at Cruiserweight. you see my point in a second. Ade. Potentially, yeah, you're right. A quick one, I want to quickly shout out Walshi, boxing fanatic. <laughs> Me and him are going back and forth about Eubank and Billy Joe Saunders. And he says I've got to give him a shout out if Eubank wins. I oh, saw Billy Joe Saunders wins. I'll give him a shout out now. Um, look, there is uh, another cruiserweight fight going up in Liverpool uh, this Saturday. Big fight, Bellew Cleverly. Don't let these guys fool you. It's better in terms of that, in terms of money, yeah. maybe in terms of crowd numbers. Yeah. It's not a better cruiserweight fight at all. In substance, in yeah, substance, no, no chance. And that's, I guess that's the problem with boxing at the moment. Yeah. You've got Hernandez and Afalabi, and I could take a bet they're not getting anywhere near paid yeah. Cleverly and Benio yeah. are getting paid. They're number one. To me, Hernandez is kind of joint one with Mark. Yeah. Afalabi is clearly number three. Hmm. Number one versus number three. Implications at heavyweight, implications at cruiserweight. Great fight. Yeah, definitely great fight. The reason why I say it's got implications at heavyweight and why, it's, why it has integrals past that because we all know that Marco Huck does want a shot at Vladimir. Yeah. Vladimir's shortlist includes Brian Jennings, Marco Huck and the winner of Fury Chisora. Yeah. Huck is very, is, you can't even call him a cruiserweight no more. Nah, he's, 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 he's huge at 200 pounds. Yeah. yeah, he cannot really make the weight effective. He's going down from 240. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so if Huck goes and then you've got Hernandez and you've got um, Afalabi, that fight actually makes De facto number one. De, de, de facto number one. It has mm. to be number one. Because right now you've got Hernandez and Huck who both kind of argue who's the best. Mm. One's got the ring title, one's got the other belts. If you like the boxer, the purest, more boxing type fight, you'll go for Hernandez. Yeah. If you like the power, slugging, aggression, you kind of go for Huck. So, you know, if Huck goes, this does make this fight major implications. Yeah, Hernandez to me is, is number one. And he's number one because he beat the man. The man was Steve Cullen. Mm. That was the man that everyone, or maybe not in this show, but in America, everyone was calling for him to fight David Hay. I kind of, same frame, yeah. speed, punch power, everything. They all were yeah. very similar. Hernandez beat him. First fight ended in, I think, a cut. A bit of yeah, cut, yeah, cut in, in a great fight. In a good fight, yeah. up and down kind of fight. Like not down the first round, not down the second round. Honestly, back it around, shocked yeah. everyone. And then the second fight, Hernandez won. Um, Afalabi, although we say clearly is third, he's, he's third almost by the fact that the cruiserweight division isn't as deep as it should be. I think Afalabi needs a big win. Hart's big win has come against yeah. um, Afalabi. And then this big win has come against Cunningham. Yeah. Afalabi needs that big win, and this could be it. Yeah, see, th this fight's funny for Afalabi in a sense, whereas I slightly disagree with the fact that the Cruiser division has got some good fighters that has a good name in it, mm -hmm. but I think it's missing a marquee name or, um, or marquee fights. It's missing. That's big money fight to yeah. chase, like yeah. Vladimir. Yeah, that's like Vladimir. big money chase. It's missing, it's missing something, so the guys that are in there are not getting the push they want for there. Mm -hmm. Afalabi is a tremendous boxer. His, his record, when you see the three losses, the two losses in the draw, when you see the, the knockout ratio, yeah. doesn't look as impressive as it is. But I'll make a money, I'll make a money bet that Afalabi could be the best boxer in the division with, with Hernandez. Mm. And his fights with Huck, he kind of neglected his boxing skills yeah. and tried to slug it out with a slugger. Mm. It's a, it was a bad move where I think Afalabi could have kind of boxed safe Use his range, his distance, and kind of got a comfortable decision if he fought the right fight tactically. Problem for Afalabi, it's a very good point you meant about him being the best boxer. We could argue Hernandez and Afalabi, they're both very good. Problem for Afalabi is that he knocked out Enzo Macanelli strongly. Yeah. Completely destroyed, took that guy's head off in the Vladimir Klitschko David Hay undercard. Oh, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, try yeah. and put the video yeah, on it down so you yeah, can see. Like first round, that like, boom. That, boom. for me, has given him almost, I wouldn't say false pretense, mm. but. He's not as strong for me as Huck or, 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 yeah. or even a Hernandez possibly. But that's given him false pretense that he can, he's got one punch knockout yeah. power, which he probably has a little bit. So that makes me feel like he slugs it out when he doesn't need to slug yeah. it out. The Huck fight, he had the draw yeah. winning and then he chose in the last two or three rounds, yeah. I'm going to slug it out with you. Yeah. If he can stick to his boxing skills in this fight, he has a great chance against Hernandez because we know Hernandez yeah. gets tired he does coming get down tired. the stretch. See, against Colonel, we saw that. See, Hernandez gets tired for a reason he gets tired. He's a huge cruiserweight. Yeah. Six foot four, comes down from about 330, sorry, 230, 235. Mm. He's a very big guy. Yeah. When you lose that type of weight, when you're that tall and you have to get lean, yeah. it's hard which to is, stay which is what fit. He's doing, yeah. yeah, it's hard to keep fit and keep that stamina up. 
So he kind of fights these fights where he seems to lead early in the fight, mm. then phase down, especially in his last fight with um, Fraz Ersland. Yeah. He slowed down a lot. If Apolami could, 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 could make this fight, in a sense, box it well, drag it into the later round, chances are Hernandez is going to suffer. Mm. And that's where he wants to take the fight. Yeah. Another thing with Hernandez as well, which I think is um, interesting about Hernandez as well, that his amateur background, mm. where sometimes he gets into a fight, but I think if, being Cuban, being that his amateur background is tremendously sharp as well. Mm. When he puts it together, he could put okay with some impressive moves. Yeah, look, he can. Um, he, he's one loss, I think, it comes, it comes to, was it Braithwaite? I love it. So that's his only loss, so that's no shame. Mm. Since then, he's racked up win after win after win. Hux people, like I said, would advise you that he's number one. In my eyes, Hernandez is number one. Not only because I think Hernandez can put the punch power together, like Ryan said, he's a great boxer. The only problem for me is those last two or three rounds. Yeah. Does he have the energy? I feel like we've seen does. Yeah. Even in the slugs with, with Huck, and Huck, like I said, is the biggest cruise yeah. out there. He still had the engine to try and slug it out in the last two or three rounds. Can he do that? If a Falabi does win, are we, I mean, are we looking at the win of the Bellu Cleverly? They're talking about Bellu Cleverly probably fighting for a world yeah. title next. Are we looking if, at that? If, Afalabi will travel. Yeah, Afalabi will travel. If, if, if Afalabi wins, I definitely see one of those fights happening. Afalabi is, you have to be honest, this is boxing and you've got to remember, it's also a business. Yeah. Afalabi is making good money, mm. he's under K2, mm. so he's, no, he's doing well, but he's not making free money. Mm. Yeah, that's the problem. in a sense, you get a fight like this year, no matter the substance of the quality of the opposition, it's a fight that's guaranteed going to sell. And with this Kirby Billy fight being on pay per view, you could potentially see the volume fight being on pay per view again, which will only enhance his pay packet. Yeah. So I see that fight happening for sure. Not going off subject, no, no, you talked about that it needing a marquee name, a marquee player. Does Cleveland and Bellu add that kind of, not marquee in terms of the best, but in terms it, of it, money now it, to the it, division? It adds Sky the, Sports pay per view yeah, money. It adds domestic value yeah. and, and then it's in two the division. But the cruiser division right now is currently a European division. When I say European, I don't mean English, I mean over in Europe. Mm. So I think they add names, they add a bit of pizzazz, but I don't think they add threats as it stands right now. Yeah. That all could change on the 22nd. Someone, we'll see. someone could put in an impressive performance and make a name for themselves. Yeah. They can. So as it stands right now, I don't really know. I, I, I like Afalabi a lot, but, and I think we said this off camera, I want Hernandez to win. And I, yeah. the reason I want Hernandez to win is because, look, um, Marco Huck's number one, Hernandez is number one, both have got titles, both have got the, you know, they've got ring belts, they've got IBF, they've got WBC, yeah. they've got all the belts pretty much. I want to see finally, uh, almost, the cruiserweight fights, we, we don't really see, you yeah. don't really see unification cruiserweight you fights. Here's the thing about this fight, you're right, for boxing it's better if, if um, Huck wins. Yeah. yeah, sorry Hernandez. Hernandez, sorry, yeah. Hernandez wins. It gives, makes a fight with Huck, mm. it brings a unified champion to the division, mm. and both of them match up well star-wise, and you can see it being a great fight, and it wouldn't go to points, you know, yeah. for oh, a fight, no, someone's going to get put out. But, I like Afalabi. I think Afalabi, I want to say deserves, but I think, you know, he has a type of style, mm. he has a type of ability, where it would be a nice come-around story for him to say, look, I was a world champion. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't like to see talented fighters like reach him. that far mm. and don't get the little icing on the cake. Yeah. But don't, don't because you, don't because someone wants the icing on the cake doesn't mean they deserve it. There's only one place to deserve it and earn it. And that's in the ring. Um, Huck, like he said, is traveling over. They said Huck's traveling over to watch the Cleverly Bellu fight. Yeah. Obviously, Johnny Nelson's ringside as well. Cleverly Bellu. <laughs> um, forget that. Anyway, moving on. Who wins and where? I'm going for a close fight by split decision. To who? That's offensive. And, isn't there? And it will go to Hernandez for hometown advantage. He's Cuban based in Germany, yeah. or based over in, I think it's Germany based in. Yeah, it's a sound yeah, yeah, promotion yeah. as well. It, it would be a split decision. I think the fight will be competitive, and I think Huck most will be, sorry, Hernandez will mostly be on the lead going into the eighth, ninth round. Mm. But like I said, I think his stamina issues, like due to his size, will slow him down, mm. and Afalabi will come in and make a final push towards the belt where he fall. He done enough, but he, don't, he won't get the decision. Um, I, I'm going uh, Hernandez, not by a split, but uh, I wouldn't say a wide decision, but probably like 116, 112, mm -hmm. 115, 130 by a couple of rounds. Just because I feel like, as much as Afalabi can box, in the fights of Sin Afalabi, he just wants to slug it out. There's something about him, I don't know, look, he, he's a big cruiserweight, but the yeah. biggest cruiserweights are Hernandez and, and, and Hart. And I feel like he wants to show his mantle that he's yeah. as big and can slug it out with them. If he tries to box Hernandez, we've got a great boxing match routine, probably the best boxer in the cruiserweight division. But knowing him, he wants to get stuck in, slug out, and if he does that, I'd expect Hernandez to kind of pot shot him. You're right, Hernandez will get tired 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, but I think he'll have enough of the lead before that, and it'll be hard for uh, Afalabi to pull the points back. And that's why I don't think Afalabi can do it. It's always hard to bring points back once you're behind a yeah. point. 
But like I said, I think it's something about desire as mm. well. Mm. But like I said, Afalabi knows he's been so close, especially in, I think it was the second half fight. Yeah. He could literally lick the belt. Yeah, I think he, he, was, he, was that that, he was that yeah. close. And that tells, that lets him know inside he could do it. How much of those fights taken out of him though? Those were real brutal, tough fights they had, all three. I, I think they took a lot out of him yeah. in terms of it's not his style. Yeah. To it. But in saying that though, so he sparked with Vladimir. Mm. Yeah, so it, you know, he's not gonna, it, it'll take a while, but he's not going to be shocked or surprised by the size or power of, of Huck or of Hernandez because he fought he fight, he fight Vladimir. All right, Belu Cleverly are fighting this week. Can any of those two, the winner of any of those two, even compete? I mean, they said Eddie Hearn has clearly come out all the time and said, look, one of them will fight for a world title next. You know the world titles are held by Falabi, Huck and Hernandez. Yeah. Can any of them really compete with those three? The only one, that okay, I, I, really I, 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 I don't think either one of them could win the fight as it stands right now. Mm. But like I said, you've got to wait until after 20 seconds to see what they got. Because yeah. they're both new to the weight, they'll go into it. Mm. I think if anyone has a chance to win one of those fights, it will be Ben because I think he's more durable. Okay. Doesn't mean he's the better boxer or the better athlete, but I think he's definitely more durable than Kevly, who I've got a huge question marks over. Mm. But um, if it was a match of fight up, Huck Bellew would be a great fight. Yeah, and that's what they're coming over for. All right, look, there you go, guys. Um, Hernandez versus Efalabi. A uh, real cruiserweight fight, uh, no pun intended, but we, these are guys that, like Ryan said, bore down from like 230, 225. These are big, big guys that go that way. It's almost like Cleverly and Bellew are going that way. These guys have to come down in weight. It's a struggle. Um, who wins this fight? And who, if they, whoever does win, do they go on to fight Cleverly and Bellew? Do they go on to fight Hart? Do they go on to fight Johnny Nelson? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, leave a comments below. Email us as well at boxtalk at hotmail.co.uk and don't forget to post on Twitter at boxtalk.uk. Also, guys, don't forget to subscribe. You know, I want 1,000 before mm. December 31st. Easy peasy. Well, it's 49 to go. 49 to go. There you go, guys. Come on, quick 49. Thank you. Please. Thanks for watching another edition of Box Talk. Cheers.